Welcome. In this section we're going to um, look at the force of gravity and there's actually two equations that we use. They were, they're both equations that you used last year. So if we want to know the force on a, an object of mass m um, and if it's near the surface of the earth then all we have to do is multiply the mass times gra the acceleration due to gravity and that gives us the force. Now um, a couple things here. Um, the, the G then has two names. We're going to give that two names. G is, can be considered the acceleration due to gravity. But it can also be considered the gravitational field strength. Near the Earth, the acceleration due to gravity then is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. That's just near Earth, nowhere else. The gravitational field strength is also equal to 9.8, but the way I'm going to put the units this time is it's 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Those are equivalent units, but what this means, the way you interpret this is for when you're near the Earth, for every kilogram you have, there'll be 9.8 newtons on it. So if you have 2 kilograms, there'll be 19.6 newtons on it. Either one of those is um, correct to use. Okay, well, but here's the other force. The other force is more universal. It's not just for near the Earth's surface. And it just says for any two masses, m1 and m2, that are distance r apart. Now if this is m1 and this is m2, and if their center of masses are a distance r apart, then the force of gravity is going to be a constant, capital G, that's not lowercase g, that's a capital G, m1, m2, just those two masses multiplied together, divided by the distance between them squared. Now there's a negative sign and there's a unit vector. This is this unit vector r is um, a vector that points radially outward. So if I wanted to know the force on m2 due to m1, then the force would be this, and this would be radially outward. The unit vector might look something like that. That's r. It's radially outward. And the negative sign means that it's going to be not pushed radially outward, but pulled in radially inward. So the negative and the, and the unit vector tell you that it's, it's not a force that repels, it's a force that attracts. Gravity is always an attractive force. At least all the gravity that we know of is, a gravi is an attractive force. Okay, now, um, so when would you use the one and when would you use the other? Well, if you're near the surface of the Earth, let's imagine that this is the Earth. This, ignore this right side here. If you're near the surface of the Earth, here's the sky, here's the ground. If I were to draw for you the gravitational field vectors, they act straight down, so they look like this. Now, the gravitational field vectors tell you these are the line, the field lines, the gravitational field lines. When they're evenly spaced like this, their density tells you about the, the relative strength of the field. And since the field is the same density here, is here, is there, is there, we say that G, the gravitational field, is constant. It's a constant 9.8 meters per second squared. That's because the field lines aren't diverging or converging. However, if we take a further look, a, a further back look at the Earth, from this perspective, you'll see that indeed these really are converging. Here are the new field lines. These just show you the direction that a mass would be pulled when it was in the Earth's gravitational field. Notice that these lines are not do not have a uniform density, that the closer you get to the Earth, the more densely packed the field lines. And the further you get away from the Earth, the less densely packed. 
So G is not constant. You know 9.8 meters per second squared? That's only true when you're near the Earth. Okay, so if we wanted to, we could just always go with this equation. We could go with this equation. The force of gravity of um, an object near Earth is going to be equal to negative g. The mass of the object, that is in question, times the mass of the Earth, that's the other object, divided by, um, now if you're near the surface of the Earth, then as I am right now, how far is my center of mass from the center of mass of the Earth? It's um, about one Earth radii. Well, as it turns out, if you're always near the surface of the Earth, rather than do this equation all the time, this will always be the same. That's always the same. The mass of the Earth is always the same. And so you can combine all these guys combine all these guys because they don't ever change as long as you're near the surface of the earth and this whole thing that I just circled that is equal to little g so m1 little g is the is the same thing as this big circle thing so you see this is just a shortcut it's a shortcut when we're near the surface of the earth so what is G? G for any planet is just going to be negative capital G. What is the acceleration due to gravity on any planet or the field strength on any planet? It's going to be capital G times the mass of the planet or any other object we're talking about all over how far you are from it squared. That's the that's the equation for little g. It turns out if you put the numbers in there for Earth, if you make this the mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth, and g, g, I'll tell you, is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newtons meters squared over kilograms squared. If you put that in, the mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth, Lo and behold, G will be 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, I'll see you at the next one.